In this video, I will show you how to write the first page of a scientific paper in five minutes. Hello everyone, this is Gabor and this is an unconventional video for the channel, but still I think it is a very useful one. The reason we are doing this because after you do all your analysis and after you create all your shiny and nice graphics, you want to write down everything in a scientific paper. And of course, this is a challenge and I want to share you my experiences and my technique to write the first page of any scientific paper in just five minutes. And all of this will be coupled with an on-screen demonstration. So the first thing to do is write the title of your paper. In my experience, many people forget about this, but it is actually the core of any paper. For this demonstration, we take a very humble title, the best paper ever written. Well, I will not finish the writing in this video, so I may be even right. After the title, you write your name. Based on the experience of my students and the people I work with, I see that often people forget to write their own name on their own work. And I firmly believe that this has a psychological advantage. So you see your name on your paper and this might push you forward in the long run. At least this is my experience with my own papers. So let's start with the core of the paper. So any scientific paper starts with an abstract. So we write abstract here, but actually we will not focus on this right now because well, the, we will fill out the abstract at the very end. So we hit a few empty lines and then we can start to write the introduction. Of course, starting with the title, introduction. After the title is done, we hit a few empty lines and actually we make a placeholder for a very important part of the paper, which is the aim of the paper. Well, this is just a placeholder right now. So you make a few empty lines and we write the title for the materials and methods. So by now, I think you notice the pattern and you know that we will not focus on this right now, but we make a few empty lines and make the title for the results and discussion. Also, we might correct any mistakes we made before. So it's methods and then go over to the results and discussion, make a few empty lines and write the placeholder or well, actually not the placeholder, but the title of the conclusion section. And of course, at the end of every paper, you have the section for the references. So we make the title for that one. And voila, the first part and the first page of your paper is almost ready and it was not even five minutes. So let's take a step back now and see what we have done. At this point, you might be wondering if this is some kind of a joke or something like that, but I assure you it is not and it is a really real process and this is my process how I do each and every paper I write. The reason for this whole process is that actually the blank sheet and the blank document, at least for me, is really, really intimidating. It holds so much promise. It is your duty as an author to fill it with sentences and thoughts that at the end come together in a cohesive paper. So it's really a big, big task. So what I noticed that if I write down only the section titles, the document is not empty anymore. And part of this psychological pressure, at least for me, is gone. As an added bonus, after this few minutes or five minutes of writing, whoever asks, you can confidently say that the writing of the paper is in progress. So it's already started and you have one page already. And here again, I want to underline that, well, this just seemed like a few words here, but I ask you, is the title part of the final version of the paper? Yes, it is. Are the section titles, so the abstract, introduction, aims, materials and methods, part of the final version of the paper? Yes, they are. So basically everything you wrote down already will make it through to the final version of the paper. So it is a great win if you ask me. But in addition to these hot tips, how to write the first page in five minutes, I also would like to give you 
my strategy how I fill out all these sections because well also there is a certain sequence how I write all my papers. Well the first step is as I mentioned already writing this first page but after that I suggest to start with the actual the aims of the paper. This one is really short but it has to be clear what you are after. So what is your main aim? So this is really maximum two, three sentences, but you have to write it down what it is. So it basically starts with the aim of the paper is dot, 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 and then you fill in basically what you want to do. Now, of course, before the writing even starts, so you have all the analysis and you have most of your graphs and stuff. So the next thing that I do always is filling out the materials and methods. And the reason is that still when the analysis are fresh, I just write down what I have done. So here, you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. So basically you just really write down what you have done, what data you used, how many individuals, how many genotypes, what type, what type of analysis were done for quality control, for any type of analysis, what software, and so on. So it's really, you just write down really factually what was used and what was done. Also, of course, you cite any software and any approach that you have used if it needs citation. And already here, I would like to underline the last part of the paper, that is the references. The references are super important and also it is very very important that you write them continuously so it's really not a good idea to leave the references to the end and thinking oh i will then fill them out at the end of my writing if you do this you are just getting yourself into a big big trouble so whenever you cite anything starting from the materials and methods, you write them down and write down the references in the references section. Also, it is really not a good idea to write the references manually. So you really need a citation manager. So there is a bunch of citation managers that you could use, choose one of them and use it, but you really, really need it for your paper. So the writing of the references is continuous. The next section I fill out are the results and discussion. So first the results. And as I mentioned, you probably have at this point already some figures. So what I do is basically copy paste all the relevant figures directly into the document with a brief description for each of them. Basically just the figure title at first and then continued with the short description of the each figure what is on it already at this stage uh, because the figures and the tables also tend to take up quite a lot of space you have quite a bit of pages and you can feel quite good about your paper already because at this point you would be in a five six pages length at least if you have well let's say many figures but even if you don't have many figures with the materials and methods and, and the figures for the results, you definitely have a few pages already in length after not so much of a work in terms of time. Because the writing of the materials and methods are, is usually quick and also copy pasting the figures is quite quick. Well, after that comes the harder part that is describing all the results and basically figuring out what happened and also writing the full results and discussion. So this is actually quite a time consuming part. But when it's done, you can formulate some conclusions or the conclusions of your paper. In some journals, the conclusion section is not explicitly required, but I really think that a separate conclusion section, at least for the draft version of the paper, is really necessary because then you can really highlight what you have done and what is the outcome of your paper. Only at this point, I actually return to the really beginning and write the introduction section. Partly because I don't like writing introduction, to be really honest, but also because then you can fit the introduction and the things that you mentioned there to the actual results 
and discussion and conclusions of your paper. And the reason for this is the, the introduction being written as the almost last thing is that because you probably have a, some idea what the paper will be about, you formulated the aim and then you write down the results and discussion, but I assure you that this can change well slightly or a bit more during the writing process of the paper. So if you write the introduction as the very first thing, it most likely will not fit to the actual results and discussion when you write this part down. So to avoid the need of rewriting the introduction, I just write it usually as the last part. So, and when this main part of the paper is done, and perhaps it went through a few revision rounds also with the co-authors or if you have supervisors or any other people involved in the paper, after that, when you are reasonably happy with the contents here, just after that, I write the abstract. And the reason why the abstract is written at the very, very last step, many times shortly before the submission to a journal, is because the abstract basically is the, well, just a shortened version of the paper. And it should contain all the major outcomes of the paper and also with some results and conclusions. And these results and conclusions and what is actually taken up as the main outcome of the paper might actually change during the writing process if there are some revisions, recomputations, or other methods and approaches that are included during the writing process of, for the paper. And again, to avoid the need of rewriting the abstract, I write it as the very last thing. When this is done, the paper is ready for submission. So good luck and especially good luck with the reviewer number two. If you have your own tips and tricks for the paper writing process, I would be happy to see them down in the comments below. For today, I thank you for your time and have a really, really nice day.